We've been following the Labour Party conference taking place in Brighton at the moment. But next week, the Tories come to Manchester. And among the 12,000 delegates will be the former leader of Trafford Council, who now is the prospective parliamentary candidate for the Conservatives for Bolton West, Susan Williams, who joins me now. Hello. Hi, Andy. Uh, delighted that uh, the Tories are coming. Well, delighted that anybody's coming for Manchester, but you particularly must be pleased that your party are having a conference here. I am particularly delighted, and when we had our spring conference here a couple of years ago, I actually specifically made representation to the party that the conference this year would be in Manchester, and it is. And I had some fantastic feedback from delegates last time, so I'm really, really pleased it's and here. Whatever people's political leanings, that a conference comes to Manchester oh, is, good, is good for the region generally, Absolutely, isn't it? yes. Um, however, before we get on to the fringe meetings, which we want to talk about, I'm intrigued on your thoughts on Alistair Darling today. He warns of a return to Tory dark ages if David Cameron comes to power and describes the Conservatives as relishing the chance to swing the axe at the public services millions rely on. Are you getting a sense of that when you knock on the doors in Bolton? Are people worrying about Tory cuts, as were often described? Well, it's quite incredible, actually, to hear some of them. I mean, I predicted this week for the Labour Party conference that people, MPs and delegates alike, would behave themselves, rally round Gordon Brown, and all be very low-risk, nice stuff. And over the weekend, you get Alastair Darling saying things like his party have lost the will to live. Yeah, front page one so, of the Sunday papers, that, um, wasn't it? While, you know, he might, he might worry about the Tories, he's also admitting that his party have no uh, will to go on, really. Mr so, Mandelson on the front page of the Sunday Times saying, I would work for the Tories. Would you welcome Mr Mandelson as a business secretary, potentially? Um, well, I don't think he wants to work for the Tories, but yes, that was the in insinuation. I don't know if we'd want him. Let's I don't know talk... if George Osborne would want him, I would think, he? No, I suspect Mr Osborne probably has yeah. an agenda of his own. Let's talk about fringe meetings, because these, yes. are, these are discussions that we're having about the big conference speeches yes. that are made on the platform. But around a meeting, or around a conference, there are always fringe meetings, lots and lots of them, and you're involved in quite a lot this time, aren't you? I'm involved in six, Andy, yes. Yeah, some in, inside the conference zone and others outside the conference zone. And what goes on, for those who are unaware, at a fringe meeting? Well, the fringe meetings are, in some ways, the most exciting aspects of the conference. I mean, there's some great debate take part in the fringe meetings and this year more than ever at the Tory party conference we have masses of fringes um, we've got we've got a, a special conference extra that's taking part in Manchester Town Hall for people who can't actually or don't want to get inside the uh, the, the conference hall. what subjects are close to your heart then which ones are you getting involved in well I'm trying to get involved uh, I am getting involved with ones that are either greater Manchester focused or focused on um, myself as a PPC and one of the first day I'm doing one on City's future. So that, that promises to be an incredibly exciting debate, especially as Manchester is like the second city, oh, in our view, outside of London. And um, so that's number one, doing that with Mike Whitby and Justine Greening. And then on day two, I'm doing one about is alcohol too cheap? which I've taken, I've actually posed the question to a number of people, including you today, and it does whip up a really passion debate about alcohol and its availability and the cheapness of it and the strength of it and um, you know what's happening with young people and, and the binge drinking, binge that, drinking that, that, yeah. that some say relates to it now alcohol is cheap and I don't binge drink but yes. I quite like alcohol being cheap if you if you were to enforce a particular price per unit I would be punished for the misbehavior of the people wouldn't I Yes, indeed. If you ask people over the age of 60 or under the age of 16, <laughs> is it too cheap? They'll say no. Everybody else. But you're not of the age of 60, Andy. I wasn't, you know... No, wasn't no. There that, are days when I look like it. I, I but, do, but... It's a combination of factors, really, I think. It's not just a simple question. And this, this is, is exactly what the fringe cheap. debates do. And do, they, do yeah. they contribute, actually, to party policy, whether it's Labour, Conservative or Liberal Democrats? Do, do people in power listen to what is said in the fringes and make it part of the manifesto? Yeah, well, I think they do. And, and you know, it, they don't just have people like me at fringes. You know, they have shadow cabinet ministers or cabinet ministers... Then they're not just sort of little affairs that go on, um, you know, outside outside of the main hall. You get some really interesting people, um, really interesting speakers, and people with all different viewpoints. It's not just you know a row of Tories or a row of Labour. Um, delegates there. It's, it's people from all sides of the political and they divide. Are, they are open to the public. I mean, some take place within yeah. what is described as the Ring of Steel and you need yes. accreditation, but some are open to the public. Manchester Town Hall is not within the Ring of Steel. Yeah. If you're keen, 
go along, get involved and, you know, and voice, voice your opinion because people want to hear it, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and Eric Pickles is doing a pub quiz on Monday night and that does. I, I'm determined to get to that because of my competitive nature. Um, but it, he will be a good quiz yeah, master. Yes, he will. Uh, there is um, one taking place in Manchester Town Hall which is about transport. Yes, um, which, which is of it. course I'm coming to because you're doing I should hope it. so because I'm chairing it, but that, that aside, <laughs> it, it's, about, it's about Manchester's transport initiative and, you yeah. know, you were obviously passionately opposed yeah. to, the con to the congestion charge. So presumably, you know, we, we need to try and persuade your party, should they become the government, to invest in the transport infrastructure of Greater Manchester, and you'll champion that, I hope. Um, well, indeed, and I suspect that transport and the provision of more public transport will come in a no number of debates, including the city's future one. OK, well, so, none of this will you be able to champion, should you, unless you become an MP. When do you think the election's going to happen, Susan? Um, I predict it'll be on May the 6th next year. Um, the last possible date is June the 4th, but I cannot see a situation where Gordon Brown would go to the local elections on May the 6th and then have a general election on June the 4th, so I suspect it's gone, going to be on and May is the that, 6th. And is that something that is being felt sort of throughout the party? That's your personal view, but, it, but is, is within the Tory machine, is it expect this particular date, Trish? Well, the Tory machine, you know, are ready for an election at any time, should it be called, but... You know, given Gordon Brown's past form, he's not going to call an election until he has to call an election. You might say that. I couldn't possibly comment. Look forward to seeing you at a conference, Susan. Thank you for your time. Thanks.